The reason I'm showing this is just for fun. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is I suck on fork truck. And Carrie, if you watch this, please don't kill me. I, I just faz out when I get stuck. Uh, so me and the little Nissan, we're having a little trouble. The world is tilted and full of sawdust that's wet. And me and the little Nissan cannot find uh, that pesky thing called tractor. <laughs> And I do not know why I get a kick out of this, but I cannot. And I'm like, are you serious? The camera's running? <laughs> yep. I struggle. I mentally struggle. You know, I'm designing a drive. Yeah, look at the smoke. I'm designing a drive to put on this thing, but this fork truck has got me buffalo. <laughs> so now we got to climb up this. So I thought, heck with it, I'll try to climb up this wet thing, the slope, with a fork truck, with a weight bench on the back, and the drive tires in front. Let's see how this works. And not so much. Great. So I turned around and I decided to finally do it the right way, which I should have done the start with. And I, I, I know it was a mess of sawdust and stuff. Here, we're, we're putting off cleaning because this shutdown's coming. And we make it. Now this room is under the file room. It gets messy. Uh, it's underneath our file room. And yes, it is very messy under there. And wow, now that I'm editing, do you see them plywood on the left? We're going to use that to form up on Big Daddy's project later. If that uh, walk forward for the uh, scaffolding. We'll have to see. But if not, I'm going to use that plywood up for forming concrete. Um, the drive I need, you see that pulley there in front of the fork truck? And yeah, I pretty much make a mess out of everything. <laughs> but the uh, shiv there you see sitting on top of the, that's the drive. That's Now what, what, what that was, I think I covered this in that previous video, but that was kind of old school, left there, kind of, they put it on the back burner. And here I come in and I wanted to get it done. So I'm kind of picking up, that, I'm kind of dealt with the uh, what, what's already been bought and what I kind of deal with. And look, I drag everything out great. I didn't even know I did this. <laughs> it was funny because I thought I sucked on it, but it wasn't until I actually went back to the footage to realize how bad I'm t I am on a fork truck. Carrie, you're definitely underappreciated, buddy. <laughs> Here's a smart part of me that says don't do this. But then there's you guys. And the fact that I want to entertain you guys. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to back that thing down that hole. And, uh, yeah, the brakes aren't the best on the truck. Rick and Ball wants to be able to service 
needs bushing sound here. And he said, I can't deal with it in the hole. He said, I need to back it where it pulls up out. So I think I got it where it pulls up out. So I'm gonna start setting that gearbox. Okay, so I stripped a bunch of, I guess you probably noticed that I've stripped a bunch of stuff that was on the drive to make it the way I wanted to make it. Um, this is a little bit different design than what uh, the guys, the, my predecessors had in mind of making. So, but now the shaft is pitted, it's pit rusted. That's how long it's been sitting underneath that file room. So I'm trying to clean up, I had to clean up on the... Uh, keyways and stuff, key stock and stuff a little bit to get things to slide together. And I'm in a season everything so we don't have trouble later on down the road. This gearbox ought to be an overkill and a half for this drive. And those of you that don't know from the last video, this is 25 to 1 ratio gearbox. Good shaft mount torque arm gearbox. I love these torque arm gearboxes. I like the simplicity of them. I like the straight mesh gears. Well, it's angle cut gears, but I like the uh, gear to gear. I don't like the, uh, mm, what do you call them, spiral bevel gears. I don't like that type of gearbox. I, I like I, li I like planetaries. I really love planetary boxes. And then I also like these sh torque arm boxes too. But I don't like spiral bevel boxes because they wear too much. I, I, I don't wear, it's just not good for it's. It's good for people, just not us. No young men on their dead I sure hope that they see me. Something, something, something for a go to town. Stevie's burning it up out there. We're working on this here. This is where I'm at. Got her slid on the shaft, got her snug down. Now, this is where I'm gonna start using my noggin because that's gotta sit up there and then shaft shaft drive drive. And then underneath the deck, they're gonna reach under the impact and buzz her up and down for the belt's tension. We're gonna use this torque arm, or as they say today, twerk arm. We'll put it up here, mount it up here and go so it'll be like this, and they'll push on it. Now, the thing's running this way. See that? So the pressure on the on the gearbox is gonna be pushing back. So what that what's gonna happen there is if something happens and the torque arm breaks someday, it'll fall back, loosen the belts up, and everything come to a stop and wait for somebody to walk over and see what's going on. I think I've covered with the way my pea brain works. I think I've covered as many angles as I can cover and use up as much scrap as I can use up to make this thing. So there's no motor adjustment. The motor's gonna bolt in solid. You know, just this twerk arm, which is gonna be sitting there where you can just stoop over and tighten it up. You ain't really gotta do much to get down in there and do any weird stuff. And then buzzer, but you gotta reach up under the deck and buzz on the adjuster seat screw down there. That's the only weird part to it. Right, let me get the belt now we're mounting the motor. I'm making little angle iron brackets and trying to turn them angle iron brackets to where somebody's changing the motor and they drop the nuts. The bottom, the flange of the angle iron will catch the bolts. And now I'm setting it up and get my height right so my shivs work out later on down the road. All right, I got my post in. And it's very heavy duty. Plenty heavy duty enough to hold this drive up. So now I'll start getting my motor ready. Getting it mounted. My post is a little tweaky tweaked. I ain't worried about it. It's kind of ugly though, being like that. But eh, life can be ugly. But when I put my motor on, I'll 
make sure and make it perfect with the daggone shaft over there. Looking good. Liking it. And now I'm putting my big shiv on. It's all rusty too. Trying to get things right for it and get that on the shaft. The only thing that turned out rusty on it was the uh, paper lock. Now I was working on the uh, getting the belt. This is a little extension going up for the uh, safety doodad for the belts. The safety guard. And now we're getting a safety guard ready for the belts here. Checking on Stevie. And I got my belts ordered from Napa. Show you a little trick. Some of you might not be nothing, but for me it's everything. I do a lot with a speed square. Now, what I'm trying to do is put an angle on this. So I pick the spot where I want my angle, which is right about here. Put my speed square in that corner. And we'll back up inside. Angle I want is right there, right at a 30 degree. You look on your speed square, it'll tell you 30 degrees down there. So, all I got to do to miter cut this is go 15 degrees this way, 15 degrees this way. Take my cutting wheel. Let me get my cutting wheel real quick. There it is. I'm gonna set y'all over here. Here goes. There it is. We'll take it. Five and a thirty is what it could have been. But what I done was a thirty. There it is. Now, what I needed was a 25. I kind of screwed that up. I filled the gap in and went ahead and left it at like a 25, but you see where the gearbox gets close and far away. Plenty of room for articulation. All right. And now to put the finishing touches on my guard. I'm only going to have four bolts holding it, and it's not going to be a step. Now I'm heating around the corners, and Stevie comes to help me heat around the corners. It turns out good. It, it really is. It's not too heavy to carry, but it's plenty heavy duty enough to build. And that's the stuff that we use in the bottom of our chain boxes. The stuff I put on top. That was Stevie's idea. Now I'm drilling the four holes. Turned out great. All right, here we are. Got the torque arm in. Got it all braced up. She's heavy duty down in there. I don't know if you can see in there good enough. You can't quite see good enough. But I think it's right to put the belts on. I gotta get the pulley in from eBay, get the belts on, and then you just tension on the torque arm till belts are tight. You wanna tighten the chain? Put your nut on that and zip that out. That'll tighten the bank uh, chain. Bracing done and everything done. The guard is made. I'm gonna have to get the little welder going because so, I ain't gonna try filling gaps the big welder. I'm gonna get the little 110 Hobart out here. Everything turned out okay. It just it's heavy duty and it's ready to go. I got a pulley coming from eBay. I got 
100 inch belts coming from Napa. They're X3V, uh, them smaller belts. So I don't want to put the torque arm on. By golly, I could. I got a string I can measure off and put the torque arm on. I might mount that torque arm yet before I call it a quits on it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to hit the buttons and leave me likes and comments and stuff. Let me know what's up. Uh, uh, and to anybody that's wanting logger weight gear, go to loggerweight.com and uh, help yourself as a shop there. And uh, we got all that good mess to take care of it. And uh, mostly just want to say thanks, everybody. Hope everybody has a good one later on.